Hey, church, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for another devotional. Today we're going to be in John chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 31 through 32. A little context is probably appropriate. Jesus uh, just had his last meal, the Last Supper, or what they knew as the Passover, which we today know as the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. Uh, Judas has just walked out of the room, and then Jesus drops the mic with this. When he had gone, that's Judas, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Profound moment here. Profound. You know, uh, I think on our journey, we often encounter moments that leave us a little perplexed and uncertain, much like the disciples did when Jesus spoke these words. <laughs> the truth contained within this statement was not immediately clear to the disciples. But as John later writes, he reveals that they would eventually come to understand the significance and the weight of this statement by Jesus and this moment. However, despite the disciples' immediate confusion, Jesus was not perplexed at all. He possessed a deep understanding of the weight and importance of this very moment in time. It was a standstill moment for Jesus, a moment in time that our timeless God had meticulously planned since the beginning of time, since before time. This was the time for the mutual glorification of God through Jesus and Jesus to God, a divine plan that had been long awaited. It was a sacrificial death of Jesus that would bring about the reconciliation between creation and creator, and creator to the creation. While the disciples were completely unaware of the profundity of this moment, Jesus paused as Judas, Satan, walked right out of the room. And in that pause, Jesus recognized that the moment of glory had arrived. He understood that God's perfect timing was at work, orchestrating a moment that would forever change the course of world history. Now, you know what this passage teaches us? It teaches us an important lesson about the nature of God's timing. You see, in our lives, we will encounter confusion and uncertainty and moments that leave us perplexed. You might be in the middle of one of those moments right now. Yet, even in the midst of our bewilderment, God remains steadfast and unwavering and certain. He is never confused. This is because he orchestrates divine moments that align with his perfect plan. Now, we may not always perceive these moments in real time, but God sees them as they unfold. He knows when they happen and he recognizes their significance. That's why Jesus paused. So Jesus paused in recognition of that moment's glory. So too, does God invite us to pause and perceive his hand at work in our lives? Now, in our spiritual journey, it's crucial, I think, to cultivate a spirit of, of attentiveness and awareness. As we remain watchful, we will begin to see the divine moments that God gives us. Now, most of the time, we may only recognize these moments in hindsight, just like the disciples did around this moment. But this should not imply, ever imply, that God's perfect timing is not at play. His divine plan always unfolds with precision, bringing about His glory and our ultimate transformation. So today, I want you to embrace the truth that God's timing is flawless, flawless. Though confusion might surround you today, you should declare your trust in God's sovereign plan. Speak back to your unsettled soul. If you're confused right now, speak back to it and find encouragement in this declaration of Jesus. Stand still and recognize that even when we can't see it, God is working to bring about his glory in and through us, even when you don't understand. I love you guys. I pray this blesses you. If it has, share it with someone else who might be confused today. And I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.